In this video I will explain the suppression effect in regression analysis. The suppression effect is uh, a term that is used for a feature of regression analysis. You don't actually have to understand what the term suppression means but you have to understand why certain results are sometimes occurring in regression analysis. You will basically need the term suppression only if a reviewer argues that you should explain suppression for example. So there's a, I don't think there is an, any valid reason to discuss suppression in an empirical paper unless your reviewer asks you to do it. Let's take a look at Heckman's paper because they uh, mention suppression. So they explain that in their correlation table and regression table the physician aids it has different sign. So in the correlation table the physician aids correlation with the physician aids and patient satisfaction is positive in regression results it's negative and that's the suppression effect. The technical definition is unimportant here. Then they explain that uh, these variables may somehow be suppressing the variance of the dependent variable that is irrelevant to its prediction. I don't, I don't understand what that means so that doesn't really have any literal meaning. Then uh, they cite a textbook in statistical analysis that presumably explains what they mean. Unfortunately that's a big book and they don't give a page number so we can't really meaningfully check what that book says about suppression. So whenever you, you explain something and then you give a reader a book to read then at least give the reader some indication which chapter or which page of that book explains the fact that you're referring to. Otherwise this is a uh, you are, you're uh, having your hundreds or thousands of readers to, to browse through this book and waste your time looking for a fact whose location you already know because you wouldn't be citing the book unless you have read it. Then they explain that uh, the correlation is not statistically significant and they try different models and the results were unchanged and they conclude that suppression is not a problem. I agree with the explanation that the suppression is not a problem but not for the reasons that they explain. So suppression effect is not something that when it occurs it's a problematic, it's, it's a feature of regression analysis. So let's take a look at uh, the, the, their actual statistics. So what are the numbers that they refer to? So they identified that the correlation between uh, physician age and uh, patient satisfaction is positive and the corresponding regression coefficient is negative. So why could that be the case? We have to remember that correlation and regression coefficient quantify different things. So regression coefficient ideally quantifies a causal relationship under certain assumptions. Correlation coefficient quantifies a linear association that could be causal or it could be spurious. It's very simple to see here why the physician age is correlated positively with satisfaction but why the regression coefficient is negative. We just need to look at the correlation table. So let's take a look at the correlation table. We first look at which, fact, which variables are highly correlated with age. Well it's the tenure. So tenure is correlated with age at, at very high level. Then we look at what's the correlate the regression coefficient of tenure here. It's, it's very strong positive. So the more experience you have the, the more satisfied your patients are. Also experience correlates with age which is quite natural because if you are like 25 newly graduated uh, medical doctor you can't have much experience. If you are uh, someone with 30 years of work experience as a doctor you must be more than 50 because normally you are more than 20 when you graduate from medical school. So age and tenure, age and work experience naturally correlate very highly. So what's going on? Remember that the linear model implies a correlation matrix. So what is the implied correlation between uh, age and patient satisfaction based on the correlation between tenure and the effects of tenure and age. So we go from age to, uh, to patient satisfaction. We take that path once minus 13 and we, we take the correlation pad, path 0.69 times 3.4 this correlation path. So that gives us some, some math. We get 
that the implied correlation based on this part of the model only is uh, 0.1 which is very close to the uh, 0.09 which is their positive correlation. So what, why is there a different sign? It's pretty straightforward and it's uh, we have a natural explanation. When regression coefficients quantify the uh, effect of one variable when other variables are held constant. So what the regression coefficient tells us that when you have two physicians that have equal amount of work experience people tend to prefer the younger one. That is natural. But people also tend to prefer doctors with more experience and those doctors that are older tend to have more experience and the experience is the, is the uh, variable that matters more than the age. So the correlation here 0.09 reflects the effect of age itself which is negative based on this model and a spurious effect due to uh, those doctors that are have more experience are also older and receive better scores. So this is a uh, this correlation is a sum of the spurious effect and a direct effect and in this case the spurious effect due to correlation between tenure and the effect of tenure which is strong uh, is a lot stronger than the direct effect of age. Therefore we get a positive correlation. So that's how regression analysis works. It, try, it gets a correlation and it tries to uh, identify how much of that correlation is spurious, how much of that correlation corresponds to a causal relationship. Sometimes the spurious part is a lot larger than, uh, or than the actual causal effect part and that can cause the, the regression coefficient to have a different sign than the correlation coefficient. It is not a problem, it is how regression analysis works.